Okay then, so hopefully my friends, you've had a good go of this challenge and you've tried to make this toggle. Now I'm gonna show you how I solve this problem. All right then, so the first thing I want to do is style this thing right here and also this switch. And in fact, we wanna style this checkbox to hide it. So let's go over here and underneath this comment, first of all, I will do a style to hide this checkbox because we don't really need to show it. It just needs to be there under the hood so it's getting checked and unchecked when we click on our actual switch. So we'll say dot toggle, which is this div surrounding the whole thing right here. And then inside that we want to grab the input and all we want to do is set the height to zero and the width to zero and it's not going to show on the page there all right so next i want to target the toggle switch so remember this is the actual thing that's going to look like the toggle switch that we're clicking all right so we need a few styles for this first of all we want to display this as block and then after that i'm going to give it a margin of 100 pixels top and bottom auto left and right that just brings it 100 pixels down from the top of the page and centralizes it in the center as well all right so after that i want to give this a width now i declared those as variables up here so this is the width of this kind of switch thing the toggle itself and this is going to be the height so i can use that saying var and then the variable name which is double dash toggle hyphen width like so so that's the width of this switch, which is 80 pixels. The height as well is gonna be this variable, toggle height. So let's do that height. And we'll say var toggle height, like so. Okay, so after that, I'm gonna apply some padding to this, which is gonna be five pixels all the way around. So basically that little circle inside the switch is gonna come away from the edges because we have this padding right here. All right, so after that, I'm gonna say cursor is pointer so that when we hover over this, we see that little hand and we know we can click it. Then I'm gonna give this a background color. So background, and it's going to be this variable right here. Now to begin with, it's going to be this off state right here, but then when we click it on later on, it's gonna to change to this. But to begin with, it's gonna be this color right here. So let's say the background right here in fact, let's say background color, like so, is a variable and it's gonna be the off variable to begin with. All right, so after that, we'll say border hyphen radius is gonna be 40 pixels. So that's just to soften up the edges and make it look like a pill in shape. And then also, I want to give this a position of relative and we'll need that later on because we're gonna position something absolutely inside this and I'll explain that later as we do it. But for now, just give this a position of relative. And then also, I'm gonna add a transition property to this to say all ease and 0.3 seconds. Now, why am I doing that? Well, the background color is gonna change as we switch it on and off. And I don't want it to be instantaneous, that change. I want the transition from the off to the on color to transition over a period of three seconds using this easing function right here. So that's what that does for us. It kind of fades the colors from one to another rather than just kind of clicking them from one to another. It looks a little bit nicer. Okay then, so let's stop there for now and just take a look at this in the browser. All right then, so now we have this switch background that looks like a gray pill and the input, the checkbox is hidden. But if I inspect and then go to the checkbox, I'm gonna untick the height and width we can see over here, right? Now at the minute when we click on this, it's not checking this, but we're gonna solve that problem later. For now, what I'd like to do is style a little white ball in here which when we click on this is gonna to slide to the right to show that the switch is on. And then when we click it again, it's gonna slide back to the left. And also when we're clicking it, it's gonna fade the background of this to purple when it's on and then back to gray when it's off. So let's create that little white ball first and then we'll look at creating the background change as well. All right, so how are we going to create that little white switch ball thing? Well, we could add some more HTML inside this, but what I want to do instead is use a pseudo class, which is the before pseudo class on the switch. And that allows us to add a little bit of content before the switch in the DOM and then style that. So the way we're gonna do this is come down here and say dot toggle, 
dot switch and then a colon and then before so this is the before pseudo class and it allows us to inject some content into the dom which for us is just going to be an empty string something completely empty but what that does is inject that content and then it allows us to style it as a separate element on the page so we'll say display this as block and then we want to give this a height now the height of this is going to be the same as the toggle height so we can copy this and paste it in right here and remember it's going to have some padding in here so that the ball doesn't go right up to the edge of the background of the switch all right so after that we want to give this a width as well and the width is actually going to be the toggle height as well because we want it to be a complete circle and for it to be a complete circle, we also need to give this a border radius. So border radius is going to be 50% like so. We'll give this a background color as well. So background color is going to be FFF, which is white. And then I'm going to give this a position of absolute. So this is why we needed this position right here of relative, because we're positioning this thing, the little circle, absolutely relative to the switch right here. Okay. So we position this absolute and from the top, we're going to say it's five pixels to bring it down from the top of the background. And then from the left, it's going to be five pixels as well. And then also I want to give this a transition property to say all ease and 0.3 seconds. And the reason we're doing that is again, so that when we're moving this little white ball from left to right and back again, it transitions. It doesn't just click into each of those places. It kind of animates from one to the other. All right, so let's save this and check it out in a browser so far. All right, so in a browser, it's looking all right, but at the minute, no functionality is there. When we click on this, we don't get any other state. And also, if I show the switch, the actual input, let me just bring this onto the page. When I click on this, at the minute, it's not being checked or unchecked. And that's because this thing right here has no relation to this thing. So the first thing I want to do is make it so that when I click on this, it toggles this checkbox. And to do that, we're gonna use a label tag in the HTML. So what we're essentially doing in the browser is clicking on this div and we want it to then check this. And then when we click on this again, uncheck this. But at the minute, there's no relation between this and this. They just sit next to each other in the HTML, but nothing is kind of grouping them together to say, look, if you click on this, then I want you to check this. And when you click on it again, I want you to uncheck it. So the way we can kind of implement this is by using a label. And we don't need this for attribute. We can get rid of that. And if we take the label and we wrap both of these things, what we're essentially doing is grouping both of these together. We're assigning a label to the input. Now, when we click on a label, which is assigned to a specific input field, then it activates that input. And in the case of a checkbox, it's going to check it. Now, when we click on the label again, it's going to uncheck it and so forth. So let's save this and try it out in a browser. So first of all, make sure your checkbox is showing. And then when you click on this, notice it checks it. And when you click on it again, it unchecks it. So now we're kind of associating those two things together by wrapping them both in that label tag. Now then, the next step is to style this so that when we click on it and this becomes checked, then we want the background to be purple and we want this white ball to move to the right. And then when we check on it again, the white ball moves back to the left and the background goes gray again. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can make use of the checked status of this input because it sits next to this div in the DOM. And that means that we can use a specific pseudo selector to say, look, when this is checked, take your sibling element, the thing that sits next to you and style it differently. And when it's unchecked, then take this and style it differently again. So we can use this checked status to style this thing differently. So it has two different states. So then what I want to do is basically style this switch differently and also this before element as well, which is the white ball differently when the input is checked. So the pseudo class we can use to check that the input is checked is just the checked pseudo class. So what I can do is come down here and say dot toggle and then look for an input that is checked. 
right? So when the input is checked, then we can use the sibling selector, which is plus, and that says, okay, well look for something that's sitting next to this, directly next to this in the DOM, and that's gonna be this. So look for the dot switch class next to that when the input is checked. So when it's not checked, it's just gonna style the switch like this, and also the before element like this. But when it is checked, we're gonna style the switch differently, all right? So all I wanna do is change the background color. So we'll say background when the input is checked is gonna be something completely different. It's gonna be a variable and it's gonna be the on state, which is kind of like this purple color right here, okay? And remember, it's gonna to fade to that because we have this transition property. So that's the first step. The second step is to also style this differently so it's on the right when we have a checked input. So let me copy this and come down here and then just add the before pseudo to this to target that white ball. All right then, so what do we wanna do here? Well, all we wanna do is move it over to the right. So to do that, I'm gonna use the transform property and we wanna translate it in the X direction, a certain amount. Now, we're gonna use the calc function to calculate how much it needs to translate in that X direction. So we basically wanna say, let me write this out and then I'll explain it. Take a variable, which is the toggle hyphen width. So that's the width of the whole toggle, the whole kind of switch, if you like. And I want to minus another variable value, which is the toggle height. So let me put that in there. I remember the toggle height is actually the width as well of the ball. We say the width is the toggle height. So what I'm doing is translating the X coordinate of this ball. And we're saying translate it by this amount right here. So we take the whole width of the switch, the background pill thing, and then we minus the width of the ball essentially. So we're moving it over to the right, that amount. We have to minus this width of the ball, otherwise it will go kind of off the edge of the pill, okay? So let me save this and see if it works. All right then, so in a browser, if I click on this, now we can see the background animates to purple and the ball goes all the way to the right. And if we click again, it goes back to the default state and so forth. And also, if we inspect, I'm just gonna get the checkbox and bring it back onto the page. We can see it's checked when it looks like this. When we click it again, it becomes unchecked and so forth. Awesome. So now this is all working.